What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and once in a while I'll throw in a list as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our list. Today we're going over five things that experienced whiskey drinkers know. Stick around. All right, so I wanna say right out the gate that this list might upset a few people, largely because I put the word experienced into the title. Now, disclaimer up front: these are not rules or criteria that are exclusively known by experienced drinkers, but they are rules that I think most experienced drinkers will know. Meaning there are gonna be some of you who are just getting started who may already know some of these rules, some won't, but I'm just using the word experience to cover all of my bases. There's no gatekeeping here. And for those of you who are just getting started, hopefully one or more of these rules will prove helpful. Because I know for me personally, when I was just getting started, and I mean at the very beginning, I was always asking questions like, how easy is this whiskey to drink? And do I like these flavors? And of course, those are completely legitimate questions. But the deeper I got into my whiskey journey, I started to shift my criteria, shift my perspective a little bit, and start asking a different set of questions. In other words, your criteria for quality might start to shift and you might find yourself appreciating certain things more or less as time moves on. Now, obviously, I can't speak for every whiskey drinker on the planet. I can only speak for myself. So I am generalizing here, but I think broadly speaking, the criteria that I'm about to lay out for you guys is the kind of thing that most experienced whiskey drinkers are going to notice and care about. So let's not waste time. Let's jump into our list. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So first off, let's get the big one out of the way. When a lot of people are getting started with whiskey, you'll hear them float around the word smooth a lot. And you know what? I do think that's an important word to use when you're just getting started. But the deeper you get into the whiskey scene, the less that word becomes important. Now, smooth isn't a bad word or a dirty word. If somebody tells you that it is, I think they're wrong. I think the word smooth could honestly go either way. Uh, for example, if we look at our Macallans here, these are two whiskeys that come in at a lower ABV. One's 40 and one is 43%. So when we're approaching whiskeys like this, I don't want to hear the word smooth. Instead, I want it to taste big for its ABV because at lower ABVs, we tend to lose some intensity. So if a whiskey has a particularly bold profile at a lower ABV, that's going to be more interesting to me than something that comes across smooth or mellow, which implies a certain lightness. Oppositely, if we look over here at our Cavalans, these are whiskeys with huge ABVs, so they might have some serious burn or some serious bite to them. So when we apply the word smooth to something like a cast strength expression, that might have some appeal to me. Because I do want to taste the bold flavors that we get with cast strength, but I don't want a strong acerbic ethanol biting alcohol type note in there. So in that context, I would say that the word smooth is fine. And in general, I don't see it as a dirty word. That being said, I will say that smoothness isn't something that I personally prioritize, and I think that's true for a lot of more experienced whiskey drinkers. But, tell you what, if you're just getting started, or even if you're not just getting started, and smoothness is something that's very important to you, then don't let some dickhead on YouTube tell you otherwise. But yeah, number five, smoothness. It's a thing. All right, for our number four, we're building off the point I was making about the word smooth. We're going to be moving into a few other words that on the surface might not sound very pleasant. In fact, they might sound a little bit intimidating if you're just getting started. But these are words that are generally used to praise a whiskey, even though they don't sound too flattering. These are words like challenging or punchy or rugged or dirty or funky. Now, these are just descriptors. Ultimately, they could be used any which way. They could be applied to good whiskeys or bad whiskeys, but they are often used in a positive way. For example, all four of the whiskeys you see here could be described as challenging or rugged or punchy or dirty. Our Lejeg over there has some funk to it. All of these are good whiskeys, but none of them are smooth. None of them are easy. None of them are pretty. None of these would be my first recommendation to someone who's just getting started, who's just getting into whiskey. Speaking personally, the more I sort of like broadened my horizon, so to speak, uh, the more I started to appreciate the more difficult or challenging or unique elements in these whiskeys. Uh, they give it a little bit more character, they give it personality, and that's something I think that a lot of experienced whiskey drinkers do appreciate. I know I certainly do. Next up is one that I think is going to be pretty obvious to most people who are watching, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. 
If you're into whiskey, you're probably seeking out a natural and reasonably intense experience. And if that's the case, then a naturally presented or craft presented whiskey is going to be important to you. That is to say, we want our whiskeys to have at least a 46% ABV, non-chill filtered and natural color. Now, I'm sure this is old news to most of you. If you care enough about whiskey that you're watching a video about it, then you probably already know this. So we'll leave it at that. We want our whiskeys to be as natural as possible with a healthy ABV. This is an important one. Honestly, I might have put it at number one. So for number two, we're kind of building off of what we just talked about with regards to natural presentation. I mentioned that in order to be a respectable whiskey, you should have at least a 46% ABV. But generally speaking, the higher the ABV, the better. So cast strength whiskeys or high ABV whiskeys tend to be very sought after. For me personally, I think the sweet spot is somewhere between 50 and 55%. But you can have a great whiskey up to or even above stuff like 60%, 65% ABV. The more alcohol we've got in our whiskey, the more flavor we're getting, the more intensity we're getting. We're getting a bigger, bolder, more robust experience. And of course, that's important. And I realize that when you're just getting started, a lot of these really high ABV whiskeys can be a little bit intimidating. That goes back to the smooth thing that we were talking about earlier. But let's remember that we can always add water to our whiskey. And that might do one of two things. It can lower the ABV down to something that's a little bit more palatable for us. And it might, in many cases, open up a lot of the more complex or nuanced flavors within our whiskey. Anyway, you get the idea. The higher our ABV, the more intense our whiskey is going to be. Personally, I always feel like I'm getting a better value when I pick up a cast strength whiskey. It's a bolder experience. I'm getting more flavor. Of course, that's going to depend on the price. But I often feel like cast strength whiskeys are better bang for buck. And obviously, that's a good thing. All right, so our number one rule might not apply to all experienced whiskey drinkers, but it will certainly apply to experienced whiskey drinkers on a budget, such as myself. And that is that age and price are not everything. There is a law of diminishing returns when we start getting into older and more expensive whiskeys. And some of these older, more expensive whiskeys are absolutely worth it. They're amazing whiskeys. Others are not. And of course, prices aren't getting any friendlier with time. Now, I will admit that generally speaking, the odds of a whiskey being good or of a certain quality do tend to improve when we have an age statement or a decent age statement. I would say that applies less to price, but I will say that age is definitely a thing. So if we take an 18 year old and a 12 year old, the 18 year old might not be better, but it probably is. Now, of course, that's not always true and we do have to consider value and there are plenty of younger, more inexpensive options out there that are fantastic whiskeys and they're not even that hard to find. If you're willing to do a bit of research, we have the online whiskey community, we have YouTube, whiskey based blogs, vlogs, whatever. They're here, we're here to help you find affordable, high value whiskeys, and there are plenty of them. I believe there are great whiskeys in every price bracket, in every age group. You have great no age stated whiskeys, 10 year olds, 12 year olds, 15 year olds, and of course you're gonna have great 18 year olds, 21 year olds, or higher but you don't need them. You can have a really solid whiskey collection on a budget. Take for example, all the whiskeys we have here, 18 year olds, 21 year olds. They're all fantastic. I like every single whiskey here, but this lineup is every bit as good as the lineup you just saw. In fact, in my opinion, it might even be a little bit better. Not only is every whiskey on this list going to be 12 years old or younger, they're also all fantastic whiskeys and they're all quite affordable. In fact, I would guess that the sum total of this lineup is probably about half, maybe even less than half the price of the previous one. So again, I genuinely believe you can have a fantastic whiskey collection without anything too old or too expensive. You don't need to rely on high age statements or expensive whiskeys. Now, I'm not saying that age doesn't matter. It certainly does. Again, to a lesser degree price, they do matter, but they're not everything. All right, so this last little bit, something I wanted to tack on at the end, you can call it a bit of a bonus. Um, I just spent the last few minutes going over a bunch of like rules or criteria, stuff that you might feel you need to follow in order for you to enjoy your experience. And I just wanna say that that doesn't need to be the case. So I guess the last point I wanna make is the rules, you like what you like. Uh, if you look at these whiskeys here, all of them are 43%. Now 43 for me is tolerable, definitely not ideal, but tolerable. I can't really take 40% whiskeys, very few and far between. 43%, you can have some good ones in there. I think these are among them. Some of these are going to be colored. Some of these are going to be chill filtered. 
A lot of these are going to be smooth, easy whiskeys. None of these I would describe as challenging or rugged. So they do kind of fly in the face of a lot of the rules of the criteria that I just set up. Do I enjoy them? Yes. But I also want to stress that these are good despite flying in the face of those rules, not because. In other words, these ones are the exception and not the rule. There are actually very few whiskeys in my collection that are 43% or lower, that are colored, that are chill filtered because the quality does suffer. That being said, there are a few that I like, so I buy them. And you know what? All of these would be better whiskeys if they were naturally presented, if they were 46%, but they aren't, and I still like them. So you know what? You like what you like, and no one can tell you otherwise. So I think we should all be encouraging natural presentation when and where we can, but no one else can set rules or boundaries for what you enjoy. So at the end of the day, drink what you like. All right, guys, that's the list. That's my list of, you know what? I don't want to call them rules. They're not rules, but it's a list of criteria that experienced whiskey drinkers may want to follow. I think that sounds a little bit more diplomatic. So if there's any of you out there who are just getting started, who are starting your whiskey journey, hopefully there was something in this video that you found useful. Now, there were plenty of rules that I didn't include in this video. That was just a matter of time. I didn't want the video to drag on for too long. So if you feel like something was missing from this video, if there's anything you want to add, let me know what it is down in the comments. I may do a part two to this. So any suggestions would be greatly appreciated. And that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That's always appreciated. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.